Well, today we're going to be going over Ephesians chapter 3 and chapter 4. This month, if you hadn't figured it out, we're going over the entire book of Ephesians. And, of course, next week, Brown will go over Ephesians chapter 5, and then I'll finish up to see uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Now, we have a lot to cover, but I need you to know something before we get started. I want to say Happy Father's Day to the fathers in the room. Happy Father's Day. I want to say Happy Father's Day to everybody that's watching on uh, social media. Man, we're glad that uh, you're attending and watching. We know you can't be here, but we definitely feel your presence. But I also want to say happy Father's Day to the single moms out there. Yeah, you're not forgotten on that either. And uh, for those of you out there that, uh, man, you're, you're loving well, and you may not know this, but you may be the only father figure in somebody's life. So keep loving well, and, uh, man, we can tell that a lot of them, uh, fathers are not attending today, and uh, we will judge them openly. Okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Here at the Refuge, you will not be judged unless you don't show up. And then we're just going to talk. That's a joke. That's a joke. Ephesians chapter 3 gives us something really unique to look at, okay? Because just like our freedom in our country, it came with a cost. Um, And salvation comes with a cost that we didn't pay. That should have been ours, but someone paid it for us. And it goes all the way back before we can even fathom and understand way before America was created a long time ago. And in this time, there's this uh, person named Paul. And I'm not going to his story, but it's an amazing story. If you get a chance to read about that, it's in Acts. You'll love it. But this is a guy that left the structured church. And when I mean the structured church, he left religion because he found a relationship with Jesus, whom he persecuted. And God sent him through his son, Jesus, to go speak to the Gentiles. Now, if you don't know what a Gentile is, if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And I'm sorry if you say, but Pastor Travis, I read the Torah. I'm pretty good. Dude, if you're born in La Mesa, Texas, you're not a Jew. And if there is any Jews in La Mesa, Texas, man, we're glad to have you. Uh, But the reality is that it comes into this that God chose the Jews as his chosen people. Now, hear me on this. God's not a respecter of any persons. That means he doesn't favor one over the other. But he chose to bring salvation through the Jews. And how amazing he picked the Jews. I'm talking about a people who have constantly been persecuted. And I'm not saying they're the only ones being persecuted. But since the beginning, it seems like the Jews have been persecuted, persecuted, persecuted. No wonder God would pick the least of these to bring salvation to the world. So this morning, I don't know how you feel about yourself. I don't know what situation you're in. But I'm here to tell you right now, God loves you. And he sees value in you. And he wants you to be a part of who he is. Not religion. We, 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 many times in my life, I chased religion and I didn't understand Jesus. I was raised in the church and I followed religion until I was able to die to self and find Jesus. Now, we're going to go over this, but let me go ahead and start with Ephesians chapter 3. This is Paul. He is in prison. He is on house arrest. Many of you in this room that have been on house arrest will go, did he also have an ankle monitor back then? (laughs) They didn't have all that back then, okay? So, he's in house arrest, but understand why Paul is in house arrest. He's in house arrest because he spoke the gospel. And he became a threat to the establishment. Because he was showing people a new way. He was telling them, no, God sees you and you are valuable. It's not what man sees, it's what God sees. Right? And they found it to be a threat, so they locked him up. I need you to understand this today. If you truly follow Jesus, you will be offensive to some people. Now, hold on. If you sit there and go, that's right, Pastor, because I got in an argument with the person the other day and I defended Jesus. God does not need you to be his defense attorney. 
doesn't need you to argue, doesn't need you to prove that he's right, doesn't need you to get on social media and bash people and declare how awesome you are in Christ. That's religion. That's not relationship. To be able to sit there, I've never met an individual who came to know Christ because they lost the debate. It's because Christ is more than a debate. Christ is more than an ideology. Christ is an all-consuming fire that if you understand his love or open your heart to receive his love, it will change you without you even being able to stop it. Amen. And some of you in this room, you tried. But here you are. Not because of your faithfulness, because of his. Some of us have said, Travis, I've tried to offend God as much as I possibly could. And even though I didn't, and, and I made him unhappy, but I sure did offend society. Yeah. <laughs> Got the record to show that. <laughs> but God goes, I don't look at men. I look at you. And I love you because I am. And I breathe life into you because you were precious to me and valuable to me. No, you're not perfect. But I'm here to tell you, many of us in this room, according to society, and this is myself, are failures. But if you look at God, God says, if you learn and accept my grace in your mistakes, then it's never a failure. It's only a failure, listen to this, when you stop walking with Jesus. That's when it's a failure. Now, as we read this, it says, For this reason, verse 1, chapter 3, I, Paul, prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you'll be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles, you and me, are heirs together with Israel, that being the Jews, members together of one body and sharers together in the promise that is in Jesus Christ. I became a servant of the gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power, not mine. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Jesus Christ. And to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for the ages was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities of the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in his son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. In him and through faith, let me say that again, in him and through faith, let me tell you what faith is. Faith is believing without the facts, not lying to yourself. Believing without the facts, but I don't feel like God loves me. Believe he does. Why? Because he said it. Amen. We have to understand that. If you really want to be a follower of Jesus, it will take you out of your comfort zone because it will require faith. And you're going to be put in situations where you're either going to believe or you're going to listen to yourself. And I wish I could tell you there's an easier way. There's not. That's why it's called walking with Jesus. Not sprinting. And some of us in this room, we like to sprint with Jesus. Dude, I have this revelation. I'm God's favorite. You start running. And you're like, you're like a, a running back that is going, give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. Quarterback gives you the ball, you run the wrong way. <laughs> Thinking, I'm doing God what he wants me to do. No, you're doing what you want to do. Because if you're truly going to walk with God, it's going to take time. It's going to be on his time, not yours. Yeah. And that takes surrendering. Listen to this. In him and through faith, in him we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Let us not forget when we pray to God just because we got in trouble and our whole motive is us, 
He still hears us. But how sad it is we only call him when we screw up. Come on. Right? Why is it that we only go to him when our life isn't going the way we want? You're following religion. You're not following Jesus. Jesus is the one that in the midst of our sufferings, we can still praise his name. Amen. That's a relationship. That's, that's somebody who can hold it down, right? Somebody that everything's going wrong and they're like, I'm not happy, but man, I love God and I praise his name. I trust him. That's real faith. And then when everything's going great, everybody likes you, got a bunch of money in the bank, everything's good, then you go, Lord, you need to rebuke me because I do not want to get full of myself. Many of us in this room fell back into curses when we got blessings. No wonder we should say to God, you only give me what I need today. Boy, don't give me too much. Some of us in this room, you know not to pray to win the lottery. <laughs> At all. Right? And I know we, we like to say, oh, I'd use it for God. <laughs> no, no, no. Lord, just give me enough for today. I'll be good. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are to your glory. I think I've lost my place. Ah, there we go. Yes. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with his power. Not your ability. His power. He'd strengthen you through his power, his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell within your hearts through faith. Now hear me on this. Following Jesus is within. It becomes a part of who you are, not something that you do. And religion is go out there and pretend. Say the right things, pray the right things, do what we taught you to do, and everybody will know you're a good Christian. Uh-uh. That's why there's uh, a scripture in Matthew that is absolutely terrifying when people go to Jesus and say, you're welcome, and Jesus goes, depart from me. I don't even know who you are. And they go, wait, wait, wait. Listen to me, Lord. We did this. We did this, and we did this for you. And Jesus goes, depart from me. I don't even know who you are. Then he looks at the other people and goes, now these are my people. Because they did this, this, this in my name. And you know what their response was? Uh, Jesus, when did we do that? We, we, and he says, when you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. You see, there's a difference. Religion is, I'm going to do this for God. Relationship is, it's become a part of who I am. I can't help it. We need to be a changed people in that sense. Not a people that try to hold on to a discipline and perform it. Let me explain this to you. God's love for you is not based off your ability to be disciplined. Everybody in this room says, Amen. We are the quitters of New Year's resolutions. We are the breakers of promises. Right? And we've all tried and it's with great intent. But here's the thing that makes it alive within you. Knowing and believing he loves you. He loves you. He had every opportunity to come to us and go, if you don't do this, I'm going to kill you. Well, might as well go ahead, Lord. Because we'd all be dead. But instead he said, no, I'm going to send my son. Now, now let me go over this here in a little bit. I'm, I'm skipping ahead. I apologize. This is some great stuff here. But keep in mind, it's a relationship, not the religion. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. I want to stop right there. A lot of us in our lives do not believe in love because we have a hard time loving ourselves. Yeah. And I'm not here to tell you I'm going to be your self-help pastor. You are somebody. 
speak it into existence, manifest destiny, you know, all these things. No, my thing is this. No, you do not deserve the love of Christ. I do not deserve the love of Christ. But he loves you. Amen. Right here, right where you are. He does not say you need to clean up and come to me. That's religion. Amen. Jesus went to the prostitutes. He went to the murderers. He went to the cheaters. And he didn't judge them, but he didn't condone their behavior either. Amen. He went to them and said, stop doing this. I got a new way for you. And it wasn't fear that drove them. It was the fact that someone saw them and loves them. Amen. It's Father's Day. I am very fortunate to have a dad that has loved me my entire life. Amen. Some of you in this room, you did not get to experience that, and I'm sorry. Some of you in this room, you're not the father that you should have been. Can we talk real, real today? <laughs> but I'm here to tell you right now, you have a father that loves you and is the master at restoring families. <laughs> master of in fact i'm not going to point it out some of you are living examples sitting in this room right now that god can bring things together Amen. it also says this and to know this love that surpasses knowledge we don't understand how much jesus loves you it's impossible we can't fathom it, right? Because we don't have that within us to do that, right? We love people as long as they're not hurting or anything like that. For instance, I know right now that you are hurting and maybe you have scars, but I'm here to tell you this. I'm not telling you, well, hey, man, get over it and walk it off. I'm here to tell you just believe in the love of God, and it will become an ointment that begins to heal that scar. Even though you're suffering, that ointment of his love, man, it starts to heal the scar. Notice this. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. See, that's the goal. The goal is not to make you good people. No amens on that one? <laughs> right? The goal is not to make you good people. The goal is for you to know the full measure of who God is. Then you will become, listen, his people. You see, we don't attend refuge. We must be refuge. Amen. Attending refuge is religion. Being refuge because of the love of God is relationship. Amen. Pastor Allen has done a great job of re, not redefining but really explaining love well versus love good. Love good is loving because, well, I better love good. I better be a good person. So you go out there and you fake it, right? <laughs> God love you. <laughs> right? And some of you are giggling because you're like, I did that this morning. I went for a donut and that jerk got it from fool me. But Loving well is being embodied with the love of Jesus. That no matter where you are, it's just a part of who you are. And you see people through the eyes of Christ, not through the eyes of society, not through the eyes of Christianity. Because, listen, just like everything else, us humans, we mess it up. So it has to be God within us. It has to be Jesus within us. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is important. It's not about us. It's about him. It's about us being a part of who he is. If you're sitting there going, no, 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 he's my God. And I, I go, to the, go to the Bible and, and I find out that supports my thought process, you're following religion. We're going to go over that right now. Know this in Ephesians chapter 3. It's deep, but the main point out of it is, praise God that he loves you so much that his salvation is for you and you don't deserve it. Amen. His salvation is for the Texans and we don't deserve it. I know the Alamo was amazing. That has nothing to do with Jesus. 
right? But don't we like to say, remember the Alamo? I'll tell you this, remember the cross. Let that be the thing that guides us. Yes, we're stubborn Texans. Yes, be stubborn for the cross. It's one thing to say you're an American. It's another thing to say, yeah, but they're Texan Americans. Uh, And then it's the worst thing to say we're refuge Texas Americans. Oh, man, those people are so stubborn and crazy and goofy for the cross. We are. We are those people. We will drive by your house and do a hug by. You'll never see it coming. You got there watering your yard. Pop, 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 pop. And you're like, I've been loved on. What happened? Because we're no punks. We ain't scared. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. This one's going to cut you, and it's going to cut me. But we need to hear it today. Amen. Amen. Paul says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you, to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. You need to hear this today. God will not be mocked. If you say you follow Jesus, but you have not died to self, you are only lying to yourself. That's what religion does. Religion says uphold your appearance. Religion says walk around wearing all your Christian stuff, telling people how they should be. That's religion. Relationship is when we sit there and go, Lord, I believe in you. Therefore, I'm going to fight myself because less of me, more of you. It's not about me. It's about you. I don't even get to declare he's my God. You better watch yourself. And I've seen people use Christianity as a spiritual weapon. And and what we do is we condone our sin by scripture, right? We'll say things like this. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I can do everything I want. It's not what it says. That's religion. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, including die to self. Including forgiving. Including praising him when everything's bad. Those are the things that you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Because if the other was true, I'd be a star NBA player. I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, you got to work out, but I don't want to. You got to learn how to bounce a basketball. Really? You got to grow two feet. <sighs> you know what? Forget this basketball thing. I got a different calling. <laughs> right. We like to call ourselves out. You know what God wants me to do? Whatever I want for his name. All of us in this room, many of us in this room, you know, please, Lord, don't let me. Save me from me. Man, I need you. That's relationship. That's understanding who Jesus is. Listen to this. I urge you. To live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble. Let that sink in. Gentle. I'm going to start calling you people out. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Think about that. You need to be humble, peaceful, gentle. Let me cut you real quick. If you heard those words and said, yeah, these people need to be that way to me, you're following religion. If you think that's about how people should treat you, you're following religion. That's what religion does. But if you hear these words and go, I need to be patient. I need to work on being gentle. I need to work on loving. Now you're following Jesus. Now you're letting that scripture become alive within you. And though it may hurt at the first part, man, I'm here to tell you, it is freeing. 
extremely freeing. And I speak by experience, not that I'm some super spiritual guy. No, 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 no. I have failed enough to recognize my junk. When I was younger, I wanted to hear the word of the Lord. Lord, yes, Father, praise your name. You want me to do this, don't you? Yes, sir. And God's like, no, no. And I'm like, oh, worry, Lord, I'll do this for you. Religion. And usually, I have learned for me, it's like, Travis, go do this. And I don't want to do it. Forgive them. No. You know what they, in fact, Lord, you said vengeance is yours. So I want you to kill them. Amen. And the Lord's like, oh, man, we got a lot of work to do here. A lot of work to do. There's going to be some killing going on, but it's going to be of yourself. That's relationship. Know this as I keep reading. But to each one of us has been given a Christ-apportioned grace. That is why it says, this is important, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who ascended is the very one who, he who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave to the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach a unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature in attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Think about this. He descended, and that's how he was able to ascend. <coughs> I don't know if you know this, but in the Old Testament, any time an angel showed up to talk to somebody, people hit the ground. They were afraid because they saw an angel. And I know we, we, we put them on cards and they're little naked babies. <sighs> Evidently, these angels were not of this world. And when people saw them who were great people of faith, they hit their face going, well, I guess I'm dead today. And the angel would have to say, fear not. I come in peace. Rise. I know I'd be like, no, I'm not getting up. <laughs> you just talk to me from up there. I'm listening. So what did we expect when he would send his son? Because we didn't expect that he would come as a servant to us. To teach us to love well. To be embodied by his person. And know this. To be embodied by his person is to have the spirit within you. It is so healing that you don't even know it. It's just as valuable as rain is in West Texas. Look at our lawns today. And if you're like me, you have no green thumb. I can grow weeds. Lawn weeds. You got to clarify that here at the refuge. Right? But when the rain comes, it cleans the streets. It makes our grass green. It gives life into things, and we had nothing to do with it. No. It's the same way how the Spirit works. If you're full of the Spirit everywhere you go, you will be followed and surrounded by the Spirit, and the Spirit will do whatever it wants in and around you. Come on. It's beautiful, and I can't explain it, and the world can't explain it, and the world has tried to recreate it, to sell it, and you can't do it. Notice this. Then we shall no longer be tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, we're going to speak the truth in love. We will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is at the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined, held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Think of this. We're one body. Not one person is more important than another. 
at all. In fact, Scripture will tell us in another part of Scripture, those who you don't see doing the work of God, those are the ones that we need to hold up and lift and pray and say, man, well done. Not the preachers, right? Because it's not about the preachers leading the flock. No, it is the preachers that should get underneath the broken and broken and show them the Father and say, go to him. Don't follow me. Follow him. And all I can do is show you my stupid mistakes, hoping that you don't make the same ones. And some of you in this room have more scars than others. You know the Lord has forgiven you and loves you. Man, we need you to love well. We don't need you to be special. We don't need you to be more spiritual. That's not what God is. God is a consuming fire, and he means to burn your heart up. The question is, will you let him? Verse 17, so I tell you this. And insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In the futility of their thinking, they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Some of you in this room got a hard heart. I'm glad you're here. Because that love of God is going to start softening that stuff. And you're going to start learning what loving well is because you're going to learn how well he loves you. Gentiles have lost all sensitivity. They have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. I need to talk about sensuality. If you're following God because it makes you feel good emotionally, you're following religion. I know this is a harsh truth, and I know I'm going to get a lot of letters from pastors. How dare you? It's what it says. I'm going to tell you right now, man. It's not about when you feel good. And when you feel God, it's about no matter how I feel, good or bad, I am surrendered to the Lord. Amen. Amen. That, however, is not the way of life you learned. When you heard about Christ and were taught to him in accordance with the truth that is Jesus, you were taught with regard to your formal way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. That's what it means to die to self. It's not about me. It's about him. And I wish I could tell you I could just pray over you and you'll be dead. No, I've learned over the years how to die to self daily. I've learned throughout the years that when I know my pride jumps up, I have to say, shut up, Travis. I don't know if you guys knew Jay. Jay Young, but we call him Santa Claus around here. He is past, but every Christmas, dude, he would be Santa. And I mean, he was Santa. Right? He would talk, and whenever, his was funny when he would talk, but whenever he felt his pride would go up, he'd go, shut up, Jay, and you would think he's crazy. He'd be walking around going, hey, how are you doing? Shut up, Jay, and you're going, has he had his medicine today? That's how he worked it. That's how he's learned to die to self. It was a beautiful thing. I miss that guy. Listen to this, verse 25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For you're all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on you while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no more. But must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Man, I could go into this. We just don't have time. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Reason why we steal? Because we think we are owed something. Come on. That is a religious attitude. A relationship attitude is, man, let me work so I can help those who can't. That's a Jesus attitude, man. It's not about me getting mine. It's about me, Lord, I'll do what I need to do so I can help others. That's loving well, not loving good. 
Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Huh. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. I feel like here at the refuge we need to hear that three times. Because a lot of times that stuff pops off when we get in the parking lot. You know, let me talk to you about what unwholesome talk is. It's not necessarily saying don't cuss anymore. It's about saying, are you speaking to tear down or build up? And hear me on this. I'm, guys, you need to hear me on this right now. Going up to a girl and going, sub, you're beautiful. That's not wholesome. That's you going, oh, I'm doing your work, God. Could you make her love me? God's like, I can only do so much. Your tongue is a very powerful thing. We need to build each other up. Call each, call each other on our junk. Can I get an amen? amen? Don't come to me and say, hey, here's what I think God wants me to do. I'll say, no, you're not being very smart. That's not godly, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to walk with you and go figure this thing out. I love you. You're better than this. Let's be better together, amen? amen? But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every forms of malice. And everybody in this room is going, aww. But I like bitterness and slander and brawling. It's because you're stubborn. But we do need to brawl. Not to be like the world. We need to brawl with ourselves. We need to, to let go of bitterness and not let bitterness consume us. Amen. I know some of you in this room have scars. Pastor, Alan, I'm sorry I'm going late. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and come up. Some of us in this room, it feels good to hold on to bitterness. It feels good to hold on to resentment. But I'm telling you, you're binding yourself. That's a tool of the enemy. You want freedom. It's that love of God that's going to help you forgive. I'm not saying you have to forget, right? I mean, think about this. If I have a friend and I go up to shake his hand, he punches me in the mouth. I'll be like, okay. <laughs> Lord, help me with my bitterness because it really feels good to be bitter right now. And God says, no, uh, you need to forgive him. Okay, I forgive him. Then I go up the next day and go to hug him. He hits me in the other part of the face. I'm like, oh, Lord, that brawling sounds real fun right now, Lord. God's like, no, you got to forgive him. Am I going to go back and shake his hand? Nope, I'm going to be right here. What's up, man? How you doing? No, stay over there. I'm going to love you from a distance. But I'm not going to let that bitterness determine to withhold love for you. Some of you in this room, you have scars. And, and man, I'm telling you, they're tough. And I'm not trying to ask you to walk them off. What I am telling you to do is trust in the love of God. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God himself has forgiven you. Amen. We are not a church. We are people. We don't attend a refuge. We must be refuge. Amen. And the only way that we can do that, number one, you need to believe how much he loves you, Amen. how valuable you are to him, Amen. and that he has provided a way for you to see his son and be full of his spirit. And let us build each other up, not only in here, but as we're out there. May we look at those that the world says is no good and say, no, I know that you're good. In fact, I know you're dangerous and good. Yeah. And he can change you. Yeah. And may it be said of the refuge people, yeah, they were crazy. <laughs> but man, they love God. Amen. And they lived it. Yeah. They are his refuge. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Amen. I want to invite you to join us in the Lord's Prayer. I know it's not on the screen, but most of you know it. So who do we pray to? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Father God, we do love you.
Master, we come to you as your children. We, God, we come to you as faithful as we can possibly be, knowing that it's your righteousness. God, that it's your strength, that it's your spirit, that you alone are able to make us in your image. So we come as a body, asking you to use us, God, to grow us in your likeness. Master, that our conversation will be in agreement with your word, that you will be glorified. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in this place amongst his people. In agreement, God, with heaven. In agreement, God, with your word. In agreement, God, with your will. Master, we want to be participating in that. We trust you for it. So God, would you bless and keep this your people? Cause your face to shine upon each of them, all of them. Be gracious, Lord. Turn again your countenance to us all. Let the peace of your Holy Spirit be found in each and every life. We come in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.